Hi dear friends today we'll be discussing some of the hematology questions which have been asked in the FMG exam hematology questions normally carries around 5% weightage in the FMG exam the first question is the mode of inheritance in the sickle cell disease and the mode of inheritance in the sickle cell disease is the autosomal recessive and here also we should revise the mode of inheritance of other anemias for example we say hemoglobin c now hemoglobin c is again autosomal recessive hemoglobin c is again autosomal recessive then thalassemia and thalassemia is again autosomal recessive pyruvate kinase deficiency pyruvate kinase deficiency that is again autosomal recessive right then particularly we consider the sickle cell disease already we have it has been given g6pd deficiency glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency that is x linked recessive that is x linked recessive then very important to be remembered phosphoglycerate kinase phospho glycerate kinase and this phosphoglycerate kinase is the only glycolytic enzyme it is the only glycolytic enzyme which is x linked recessive it is the only glycolytic enzyme which is x linked recessive right so these are some of the things to be remembered then in the hereditary spherocytosis if you consider you get both dominant as well as the recessive form but if the question is asked hereditary spherocytosis is then you have to go in favor of autosomal dominant as it is the most common but here if you see in hereditary spherocytosis ankyrin deficiency band 3 deficiency and spectrin deficiency i am talking of ankyrin deficiency band 3 deficiency spectrin deficiency all three are autosomal dominant but alpha spectrin deficiency please correct here it is beta spectrin above alpha spectrin and protein 4.2 deficiency they are autosomal recessive but if the question is asked hereditary spherocytosis is your answer should be autosomal dominant and if they are specifically asking you autosomal recessive pattern is seen in then the answer is alpha spectrin deficiency and protein 4.2 deficiency then in hereditary xerocytosis in hereditary xerocytosis the mode of inheritance is autosomal dominant the mode of inheritance is autosomal dominant so I'll just try to summarize all the mode of inheritance then very 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 important mcq to be remembered p n h that is the paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is a acquired condition this is not congenital this is very very important and this is one of the pet question the examiner asks paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is a acquired thing then the second question is the mode of inheritance of von willebrand disease and the right answer is the autosomal dominant and if we consider the bleeding disorders and we should consider here hemophilia a the hemophilia a which is due to the clotting factor a deficiency the mode of inheritance is x linked recessive the mode of inheritance is the x linked recessive then is hemophilia b which is the factor 9 deficiency and it is again x linked recessive hemophilia c which is factor 11 deficiency that is autosomal recessive that is autosomal recessive and para hemophilia and the para hemophilia that is basically the clotting factor 5 deficiency and this is autosomal recessive right so just to discuss here what are the basically modes of the inheritance in the various bleeding disorders this you should remember these are all one liner questions and they are highly scoring questions 
then there was one picture of so called asked that this actually is which type of leukemia basically here showing is the gum involvement and gum involvement is a feature of acute myeloid leukemia the gum involvement is a feature of the acute myeloid leukemia and regarding aml although it's a very vast but certain things to be remembered first important thing is usually no viral etiology this is again a one of the question the examiners frequently ask no viral etiology and in the aml the most important to be remembered is the m3 type and m3 type is also called as acute promyelocytic leukemia that is also called as the acute promyelocytic leukemia and here you get is the m3 type translocation 1517 and please remember the gene also pml r a r a fusion this is the gene you need to remember here and this overall carries the most favorable prognosis so most favorable prognosis among all of the aml is the m3 type then hemorrhagic manifestations hemorrhagic manifestations are also seen in the m3 type hemorrhagic manifestations which can be dic that is seen in the m3 type then the next thing you need to remember is infiltration of the gums infiltration of the gums you can say infiltration of the skin infiltration of the meninges is seen in the m4 and m5 type of aml and m4 and m5 type means there is the monocytic type of the aml monocytic type of the aml right and involvement of the skin is also given the name as leukemia cutis that is also given the name as leukemia cutis and that is again seen in the m4 and m5 type and most common type in the down syndrome most common type of aml i am talking in the down syndrome is the m7 type of aml which you call it as mega karyocytic type which you call it as the mega karyocytic type right so this is regarding the picture which was asked and please remember they can just what you all know they can imply it in a clinical image now we discuss is the question number 4 and the question number 4 was microcytic hypochromic picture and microcytic hypochromic picture first is microcytic normal mcv you study is 90 plus minus 8 femto liters and normal mch you study is 30 plus minus 3 pico gram so this comes out to be 82 to 98 and this comes out to be 27 to 33 so if you are saying microcytic microcytic means mcv is us than 82 you can remember and mch is less than 27 and microcytic hypochromic picture you all know is basically seen in the iron deficiency anemia and you can easily remember by a mnemonic tails where it is particularly seen now t stands for the thalassemia t stands for the thalassemia a stands for the anemia of chronic inflammation anemia of chronic inflammation i stands for the iron deficiency anemia iron deficiency anemia l stands for the lead poisoning l is for the lead poisoning and s stands for the sideroblastic anemia it stands for the sideroblastic anemia right and if you talk of the reticulocyte count in the last four in the last four there is decreased reticulocyte count there is decreased reticulocyte count but here in the thalassemia there is the increased reticulocyte count right so you in this question you should know what is microcytic what is hypochromic and in which all conditions we are going to see 
then there was a picture so called asked regarding the macrocyte this picture was shown and it was asked and the diagnosis to this is the megaloblastic anemia now in the megaloblastic anemia if you see on the peripheral blood film there is presence of macroovellocytes there is presence of the macroovellocytes then there is presence of the hypersegmented neutrophils which is very well seen in this picture there is hypersegmented neutrophils so there is macrovellocytes there is hypersegmented neutrophils what are seen here and the last question which was asked was this the monoclonal antibody rituximab this rituximab is anti cd20 so i will just summarize the monoclonal antibodies which i have taken from the harrison and i am summarizing it here anti cd20 one is rituximab and the another anti cd20 is the ofa2 mo map this is also anti cd20 this is also anti cd20 then we have also got anti cd19 and anti cd19 is the bilan bilana to mo map this is anti cd19 then anti cd22 and anti cd22 is ino to zu map ino to zu map and apra to zu map so anti cd19 anti cd20 and anti cd22 apart from this you should also remember ruxoli ruxoli tinib now ruxolic tinib is basically a jack inhibitor it is a jack inhibitor jack 1 on jack 2 and this is been used in the polycythemia vera this is used in the polycythemia vera then you should also remember the ibrutinib right you all must be knowing this ibrutinib and ibrutinib from the name it is clear bru for bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitor so it is a bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitor bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitor right that is the ibrutinib then is the venetoclax venetoclax is a bcl2 inhibitor bcl2 inhibitor right so this is regarding some of the questions of the hematology which were asked right do watch this and basically do remember this and hematology is always a very very scoring expect in the fmg exams thank you